Smith now. This is Ryan Brath with Collective yeah. Arts Brewery. Yeah. Yes, hi. So where are we? So we are in the Collective Arts uh, Brewery, we're actually in the event space right now. Uh, behind us you see fermentation tanks, uh, the canning line and the bottling line are all back there as well. That's where we physically make all the beer that we're going to try today. And it's a bit noisy. I guess that's the sound of a real brewery. That's the sound of us working right now. Okay, that's great. So, so I'm here really to ask for your help. Um, holiday season's coming up. It's a time of a lot of food, a lot of drinking. Uh, a lot of people know about wine, but I've been thinking I'd like to bring some beer into the situation this year. Yeah. So could you help me maybe we can start going through the day, a holiday day, and maybe we'll start early in the morning or at breakfast or brunch, and sure. uh, you can take me right through to the big conundrum, what to drink with turkey. All right. So a lot of people uh, think of wine as a pairing food, but beer itself yeah. works really, really well. Uh, and one of the differences that beer offers that wine doesn't is carbonation. Right. Different carbonations for different styles of beer uh, go really well with not only cleansing your palate, uh, but also offering some different taste sensations where you're not going to get that with wine. Great. Um, there are, um, if we're going to talk, if you're going to kind of use wine as a reference, white sure. wines are more like a lagers. Right. Uh, we only make ales and they're more like red wines. They have a much deeper flavor profile. More flavor, more body. So when it body. comes to pairing and trying them with different things, it works really well Great. that way. So. Well, say we started with brunch. I know I like a little champagne and orange juice, but you're going to give me a good idea otherwise? Yeah, so a lot of people use champagne to make mimosas with right. orange juice. Uh, wheat beers, because of their higher carbonation, right. uh, typical uh, lower alcohol content as well, goes really well. Uh, with that to make a, a beer mimosa instead. So uh, one that we have, uh, it's also like fairly readily available as a style, is a Goza. Goza? Goza, yeah. It's a salty wheat beer originated in Germany. Uh, Can we try a little bit? Absolutely. Nice when you pour it and you get a little bit of... Wow, beautiful color. Now that's a little cloudy, Ryan. What's that about? So wheat causes the beer to not be completely clear. Okay. Uh, because the goza is about 50-50 barley and wheat, uh, you get what is kind of not quite a completely clear beer. You call it like a pale or slightly opaque. Uh, it smells a little briny Yeah. because uh, of the salt. Almost like the sea. Yeah, so we use, for us we use pink uh, Himalayan salt Beautiful. and then coriander as well. to kind of It gives it those, those nice smells and nice light aromatics. Uh, Brie is a great one that goes with it too. Like if we're talking cheeses, because of the salt that's in it. Really? Uh, it's a really, really nice light beer. So, cheers. Cheers. Now, would I put the orange juice right in there? Right in or it. Or a little slice? Yeah, of orange? I do 50-50. 50-50. When I make them with the with the goza, and comparing it to champagne, it's lower alcohol. Right. So it's easier to like. You have a brunch. You want to have a couple. Yeah, it's nice. It's easier to kind of enjoy that than going with the something that is safe. 14%. Yeah, and I can see how the salt and the sweet are really going to go together well. Yeah, it does. It's a really good pairing. And also for cheeses or anything where normally you may say add more salt as a seasoning. Yeah. This goes really well instead to just kind of have it as a meal, something light. Should we try it a little bit with the brie because that's a creamy brie? Uh, maybe we can just use this as a... Sure. I'm going to just try a bit of that. Boy, that's nice. It's really cool. I yeah. would normally not think of beer with cheese, but that really works great. It's that is to me is like one of my favorite pairings is a, a wow. goza with a brie. Fantastic. Uh, just because again, the uh, the saltiness with that uh, goes really well with the cheeses that are lighter flavored. So now let me put some challenges to you because some of the cheeses here are pretty amazing. We've got a, a smoked cheddar, so that's got a smoky character. It's strong. Okay. What would you? What would we pair with that maybe to make it bring out the flavors? There's two ways we can pair. Uh, you can contrast it, so go completely opposite. Right, like... Uh, yeah. Uh, or you just completely complement it. Okay. Uh, anything that's got a real strong flavor, like a smoked cheese or uh, anything that's really like, aged a lot longer, yeah. go stronger. Go okay. stronger in beer, uh, stronger in, like stronger hoppy. Uh, yeah. More that, alcohol or it doesn't matter? Uh, some of the higher... Uh, Hoppier beers are going to have a little bit more alcohol. Okay. Uh, just because of the process used in making them, like an imperial beer, or you can even get a smoke. There are beers where they smoke the malt. Oh, right. So, so you uh, have a smoky flavor with the smoky yeah, cheese. Yeah, either a porter or something along the lines of an IPA, or like an imperial IPA. We have one of those. We also have a porter. Well, why don't I slice a piece for you and me? Sure. And then you can pour a beer and we'll see how it works together. 
Now that's got a beautiful color. Yeah, so this is our black IPA. Uh, pretty unique as a beer. Um, it's very smoky. Wow. Uh, because of the malt that we use, gives it that dark color. Uh, it also adds some nice aromatics to it. That's a beautiful color, right? Eh? It is. This one is a stronger uh, alcohol beer. It's 6.8. Okay. The great thing with the, the beer industry is the fact that a lot of beer comes in taller cans. Right. And it's really easy to pair using smaller glasses like this. Yeah, these are ideal for tasting or for just really drinking responsibly, having a few exactly. good tastings of beer without drinking a lot of beer. Yeah, and most people assume like or think of beer as always using like a big glass. Yeah. Uh, even the short, like a stemless wine glass works really well for beer. Okay, great. So, so we're going to just try some of that cheese? Yeah. Well, that's a great cheddar. You can definitely taste the smokiness. Wow. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. More body, stronger flavor in your mouth. And that carbonation helps cleanse your palate. Absolutely. So it's easy Just to go back. It doesn't feel like it really sits there. No. So, And it makes it easy to kind of mix and match going back and forth with different foods. So now, I am always wonder about how to serve this in terms of temperature, because I know the Brits like it a little warmer. Yeah. Do you have a rule of thumb for a dark beer? Or how do you do it? Really simple rule of thumb uh, along the lines of, of serving beer at certain temperatures is to go with the alcohol content okay. to match the temperature. The number? The number, yeah. So having a light beer, a blonde ale, 4%, 5%, right. to go with something along the lines of, like, serve it nice and cold. As cold Four as possible. Four degrees. Yeah, basically as cold as possible. Right. When you get into the the Imperial beers, like our, our IP, Imperial IPA or our Black IPA, again, at 6.8, it, it is obviously a lot stronger. Right. Uh, to just serve it 7%. Sorry, 7 degrees. 7 degrees. Yeah, serve it 7 degrees. You get into the barrel age stuff, um, or the, the Belgian, the triples, and the quads. And that can into, go above 10, right? Absolutely, yeah. You're getting into wine territory, so again, you're not going to be serving it in something along the lines of, of a pint glass. Right. Uh, it's, it, you'd be more of using a stemless wine glass works really well. Nice. A lot of people have them, or a glass like this, where you can pour it essentially out of the fridge, yeah. and then just let it sit. Kind of warm it up with your hands. And you're actually warming it up a bit with your hands. Yeah. Now, uh, why do I want it warmer? What's going to happen to the flavor? As soon as you warm it up, you're going to increase the aromatics. Oh, okay. Uh, and it's, it's like eating uh, cold food right out of the fridge. Right. You don't really smell the same. As soon as you right. heat it up, you get all the smells, all the oils that are kind of permeating off of that. Uh, creates a, a much different flavor profile. Same with like warming cognac. Yeah. It just brings the aromatics out. Exactly. Wow, great. Well, this is delicious. Now... A tough cheese to match, I think, is Stilton. It's super strong. Yeah. Um, what do you think? What's a good choice? So another IPA, another great option, uh, would be our Imperial IPA or something along the lines of a, a porter or a stout, like a smoked stout. Okay. Um, Should we give it a try? Absolutely. Okay. I'm going to give you a hunk of this. I don't know if you want to kiss your girlfriend after this, but I'll leave that up to you. Glass yeah. Here. Nice. Awesome. Now, what's this beer that we're going to match? So this is an Imperial IPA. Okay. Uh, Imperial um, refers to the higher hoppiness and higher alcohol content. Okay. Uh, because this would typically travel traditionally. A pale ale is usually four point five or five. Uh, you'll, you'll get this extra pale ales. They'll move into the five and a half, okay. six, uh, six kind of area, uh, generally speaking. Um, because this is the Imperial, it's at it's eight five. Wow. Yeah. If you smell it, you'll get a lot of aromatics of citrus. Oh boy. Right on the nose. It's all hops. You don't add anything to our beer uh, to give it those flavors uh, to give or give it those aromatics. That's it's, it's entirely strictly hops. through chemistry and uh, and the brewing process. So to be clear, you're not putting any fruit in here. There's no juice injection. No. This uh, is straight beer. We do have a, we do have beers where we'll use a little bit of orange or lemon zest right. in the brewing process. But again, we're not adding anything artificial to it. Wow. It's all added in, in that uh, in those first couple steps. And then when it goes to the fermentation tank to add yeast, uh, yeast can also add flavor depending on the style. I can really sense the citrus on that. It's crazy how much it is. orange, you'll get grapefruit. It's for sure grapefruit. And the warmer it gets, you'll get more of the smells out of it. So right now, this is this is right out of a fridge, so it's a little colder. But Should we give it a try against the crazy yeah, blue? Right. Oh, that's delicious cheese.
that cuts right through the the blue. Yeah, blue cheese like this is Stilton. That's amazing. Really, really strong. If you you pair it with something light, you're not gonna really cut it. No. Uh, as soon as you get something really, really strong in the hoppiness of this beer, wow, or something that's got some smokiness to it, they don't clash. They actually no. really complement and smooth each other out. Absolutely. Whereas if you just had Stilton by itself or just an Imperial IPA by itself, you're gonna get all those strong flavors. But when they work together in your mouth and in your like your in your nose, nose and all yeah. like your your palate, everything kind of works together to create all the senses that uh, create that final taste. Right. Like I find flavor. this kind of a, a difficult beer. It's, it's a bit um, overpowering for me. With the cheese, it's terrific. Just great. Yeah. When you taste it now, with like seeing that the cheese is gone, you'll get more of that bitterness in the back of your mouth. It's wow. still kind of sweet because of, again the hops create a little bit of yeah. Uh, sweetness with the malt as well. So um, when you do pair with those stronger foods, completely changes the profile of what Fantastic. you're drinking and, and tasting. So, well, why don't we give one more cheese a try? This is an aged cheddar, five years old. All it's right. going to have a strong flavor. Do you think there's something that might work with it? Yeah, I got a couple more glasses here. Great. Um, another one that would work really well uh, would be again. You were you were talking earlier about a pale ale. Yeah, I like pale ales. So this is our rhyme reason. A lot of different pale ales available out there. This is quite a popular beer. <laughs> yeah, this is actually this is the first beer we ever made. Uh, <laughs> open that one a little. That's quick. real beer. That's, yeah. <laughs> Here we go. All right. So in a way, this is a signature brew for you guys. Yeah, this is this is one of the ones that we uh, we really rest our hat on. It's one of our cores. Beautiful color We're really, again. Really proud of this beer. Uh, it goes with a lot of different food. We won a lot of awards for it. Um, What's its character? What's its profile? You're going to get uh, a lot of aromatics of like a citra hop on it. Um, it's not, it's, it's typically a pale ale. You're going to go right into something that a little more bitter. Yeah. Uh, ours is, is super well balanced. I okay. always think of um, any beer that, is, that has a, a lot of balance instead of where you just taste hoppiness and it's just really bitter and yeah. kind of puckering. Uh, this really gives you that off the front and then you get some sweetness. It, it works really, really well together. Um, just like our Imperial or our Porter, where you get something that it's a lot of flavor, a lot, of, but it's balanced. It yeah. doesn't it doesn't sit there in your mouth for a long time. Right. It, it's not an off-putting flavor where you wouldn't want to like sit there and maybe enjoy it's enjoy one in of the them. Mouth. Yeah, exactly. All right, let's try that cheddar. Again, that's a great cheese. Not as citrusy. This is a, a straighter kind of beer. Yeah. Again, I gotta say, it works really good with really well with the cheddar. Beer is so much fun to pair. Oh, it's with so food. interesting. Because uh, there are so many options, there's so many different styles. Like I brought nine different beers uh, <laughs> just for here, and we we make more. And when it comes to different uh, profiles and aged beers, there's it's it's so vast. It's crazy how many options so are out there. So much to choose from. And when, when sharing meals and doing something like this, when you're offering tastings, one of the things that we do and a lot of craft breweries do is do them in larger bottles like growlers. And then just do little pour outs like this. Yeah. That way you can bring it to a party and share it along yeah. with other people. You don't feel like, oh, well, I'll pour it half a can and pour it half a can. Right. Uh, it, it really makes that kind of that experience of trying different things instead of just, you know, going out and buying a 12 pack and trying to drink it. Yeah, it's too much. And we've almost really done a flight here. Um, the one thing I would like to try is um, if we have, I think we had some chocolate, but what, 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 let's just think about it. What would you do with dessert? Say I had a chocolate cake or a, a piece of chocolate. Is there a beer that might go with that? Chocolate is, uh, for me, a, a, a porter. A porter, goes right. goes really well. Uh, people, uh, assume, like porters and stouts, they are different. They're, they're they similar. look the same a bit, right? They're similar in a lot of ways. Right. Um, but porters tend to be not quite as smoky or not, qu not quite as full body. Okay. Uh, porters tend to be a little bit sweeter. Right. Um, so our porter is another great one. Should we here. use a fancy glass? Yeah, we'll use those. That's a great idea. Great. I love these glasses. They really make beer pretty elegant. Yeah, and the great benefit to this is you can serve a lot of different styles in it. You can make your mimosas. Are you allowed uh, to hold it like this, or should you? Yeah, so with the, with the lighter beers or the lower alcohol beers, it's easier when you hold the stem. You're not right. going to warm it up quite as quickly. But as soon as you go into something where you're getting into an imperial uh, stout, an imperial IPA like ours you here, 
uh, you can warm it up. Right. Just, just kind of let it sit, warm yeah. it up, and then all the, the top of this glass, what funnels it really the, does is it funnels all those aromatics when you're tasting right. it. So. Beautiful glass. We have another one as well. This is, this is actually specific to an IPA. So that's designed for the IPA. Specifically designed for an IPA. Uh, again, what it does is it takes all the ar aromatics from the, like this, from the IPA style and it just really funnels it straight up. Um, nice. The big wide mouth glasses are, are for your porters and stouts. Right. The, the narrower ones are for those really aromatic beers where you're trying to get it all to push that right up into that into one your spot. Nose. Yeah. yeah, that's so, great. Let's so go should we try one. a little bit of it? Let's do it. Man, it almost looks like dessert. Uh, we use a chocolate malt uh, in this, so it gives it that really nice creaminess. This and we you want toast the, uh, the barley, or how does it work? Yeah, so we we actually don't malt our barley here. We don't okay. have the facilities to it. There are very few breweries around the world that actually malt their own grain. Right. Um, one of the few is is Guinness. They own oh, their okay. own malting facility, which we're pretty familiar with. Right? Yeah, they're pretty popular. Uh, so not not quite on the, the scale of craft, you would say. Um, but a lot of the places come from generic like malting houses that okay. do a, a, a vast array of, uh, of malts. And your brewmaster would pick the malt that he wants. Yeah, they, to make they make a recipe. They'll make it on a, a small scale, and then they scale it up to, to produce wow. in the quantities that, that we produce here. Uh, and that's uh, – porters are a great example because you get the coffee and the, and the chocolate malt. Yeah, I've seen But that. when people try – if you think of the malting process right. as coffee – yeah. It's very similar. One coffee bean and one grain of barley, when you roast them for a certain temperature, at certain temperatures for certain lengths of time, you get different smells. Oh, okay. And you create the exact same thing with uh, Like with a dark barley. coffee bean, a dark roast. Yeah. You can do a dark... Roasted longer. Wow. Roasted at higher temperatures. But with beer, what we're actually doing is we're, we're taking, say, we'll take some lighter barley, take some medium barley, we'll oh, take some take some heavier stuff, and then we'll put it all together to create that different recipe. And that's, that's where it comes to ales. There's so many different flavor profiles. That can emerge. So with this yeah. here, you'll you kind of warm it up and smell it. And I can have this with cake. I could have this oh, with a piece yeah. of chocolate. Yeah, uh, and the nice thing is with it too, because of the aromatics, uh, you get oh, just yeah. chocolate and coffee right on I can right start to smell the coffee right away. And the carbonation, wow. when you're having those heavy desserts, like a cake or a cheesecake or something along yeah. the lines of that, or even just chocolate, um, it, the carbonation cleanses that palate. So it doesn't feel like it really sits there super heavy. Now I can smell it more as it warms up. Yeah. For sure. I got to have a sip. Wow. Almost a bit of espresso. Yeah, people think people think wow. of after dessert is having a coffee or having a cappuccino. You can have a porter and just oh. sh share a can or share a, a small growler with somebody. So Fantastic. It's a, it's a good way to, to really try different things out. Um, now, I can hear that you've got a lot of work to do back here, so I want to end on a couple of tough questions. Okay. Turkey's a really tough food to match wine with. It drives wine guys crazy. Are there beers that I could serve with a nice turkey dinner over the holidays? Yeah, uh... Think of it as um, like a lighter beer, a blonde ale. Oh, okay. Um, because even like white meat, like turkey, or even a right. fish, which is even lighter in profile, yeah. where typically you're going to have a little bit of citrus with it, a blonde ale with some citrus, or uh, even a wheat beer would go with a slice well of orange it. on it goes really well. Yeah. And then at the fixings, uh, you know, the squashes, the sweet potatoes. Is that going to be okay with some beers? Yeah, you can do. You can use an amber. Ale, again, there's a little bit more malty sweetness to it, just right. like you'd have some more sweetness with like a stuffing. Yeah. Uh, it goes really well. Well, I don't know. This might be a beer holiday this year. Fantastic. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks a lot. Yeah, that's been great.